Welcome to Fun Redrilling Engineering. On a land drilling rig, life can be relatively simple. The drilling rig is placed firmly on the rig site and does not move. If you lower the drill string downwards on the work floor, it will automatically pass through the blower prevent to the borehole. During drilling operations, drilling mode is pumped down the drill pipe to the drill bit. It exits the bit nozzles into the annulus of the borehole, picks up all the cuttings, carries them up in the annulus surface. Yet the cuttings are separated from the drilling mode so that the clean mode can finally go back to the drill string for the next round. All this is a bit different offshore. Here we can see a floating offshore drilling rig in the ocean. Of course, there are high waves, tides, winds, current. And that's why the position of a floating drilling rig on the ocean surface is not stable. It's also challenging to run the drill string down to the seafloor and hit the borehole there. Most likely, the drill string will drift back and forth to the current and will not find the borehole on its own. There is also a problem with the circulating system. Of course, we can easily pump the drilling mode down the drill string to the borehole and it also flow back up to the analogs. But since our borehole ends at the sea floor, our expensive drilling mode will just pour into the sea. And firstly, this is undesirable and expensive. Secondly, it is not allowed. So obviously, we need to think about how we can get this problem solved. Well, the engineers have come up with the so-called marine riser. And most people just call it the riser. A riser is basically a huge steel pipe. You can see a riser in this picture here. In the back, you can see a man. So you have a size comparison. This huge steel pipe. Is flanged together piece by piece with large screws and is now lowered on to the seafloor on guide cables. On the bottom end of the riser, there is the blowout preventer. The small tubes on the outside of the riser contain control lines which are required to uplift the blowout preventer from the floating rig at the sea level. The riser now connects the platform at the surface with the borehole on the seafloor. This is great as we can now easily run down a drill string down to the riser into the borehole. If we pump drilling mode down the drill string, it will leave the bit at its bottom, flow up the analogs to the sea floor, and from there to continue rising to the sea level in the analogs of the riser. On the platform, the mode is conditioned and prepared for the next cycle. Such a riser is certainly not just a stick steel pipe. From these pictures behind me, you can imagine it is a pretty complex structure. It requires a flexible angle assembly below the workflow of the platform, so the riser is not torn off when the platform moves up and down on the waves of the ocean. At the bottom end of the riser, we have an emergency disconnector. If, for example, a hurricane approaches, we need to be able to quickly close the borehole, disconnect the riser from the blower preventer so that the platform can escape. So that this riser also has large buoyancy bodies on the outside, so that it doesn't pull too heavily on the drilling rig. So overall, the marine riser is a pretty impressive installation. So through the riser, we can easily run the drill string in and out of the borehole. Due to the riser, we have a closed flow loop for the drilling mold in place. And so all of the problems that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode are now solved. In our lecture, Drilling Engineering 2, we talk about offshore drilling in much more details. If you're interested, please feel free to join our lectures. We'll be happy to see you. Look off.